UConn versus San Diego State, Thursday Sweet 16. VR, who do you like and why? All right, I love San Diego State in this game. The time off is going to be a negative to UConn, who had built up so much momentum going into the tournament. Now, couldn't you say the same thing about the time between the Big East tournament and the first round of the NCAAs? I mean, they, they were super hot in the Big East, picked up right where they left off. They weren't facing San Diego State in the first two rounds. That's the difference. San Diego State is going to create a lot of problems for UConn. UConn's strength is their height, their size. Unfortunately for them against San Diego State, the advantage will not be as great as it's been. San Diego State's a big team. More importantly, to beat San Diego State, you got to push the ball, something UConn doesn't do well. All right, so now we're talking fundamentals, which I always like when a capper gets into the fundamentals because you really don't see that in power rankings. You don't see that uh, with a lot of analysis. Is this team might, you know, there could be two teams that are equally good, but it's kind of that A, B, C thing. A beats B, B beats C, but C beats A. And it doesn't make any sense power ranking wise, but it's about matchups. So you're saying that Connecticut's height usually is a problem but it's for the opponent, but it won't be against San Diego State. Correct. And you're saying that where San Diego State is vulnerable is if the pace is pushed, but Connecticut's going to be unable to do that. Exactly. And finally, because I am a market guy, right now, Connecticut's stock is a lot higher than their true value. They're going to go off as the listed favorite in this game, even though San Diego State came out as the one-point favorite. Public perception has made UConn the favorite in this game. It went to one, pick them. It's hovering right around there. But the UConn side is the favorite side right now, more or less. That's strictly public perception based on UConn covering numbers. They covered throughout the Big East tournament. They covered in rounds one and two. And San Diego State on the flip side, although they are hot ATS, they're not getting that hype they deserve as a number two seed. Uh, they got over, the big thing for them was getting over that hurdle of finally beating BYU. That was the difference maker. In the conference tournament. If they didn't beat BYU the way they did, I don't think San Diego State would have gotten as far as they have right now in the Sweet 16. Because BYU was the only team that gave them losses, two losses. They were able to revenge that, win the conference tournament, and walk in with a swagger. And this is a talented and experienced team. And in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, that's the difference. You want a team that's experienced. You want leadership out there. I know the marquee clubs usually don't have you know, juniors and seniors, but this San Diego State team, when you look at that roster, they have some leadership out there, and I think that'll be the big difference sort maker. Sort of like Butler. That's where these mid-majors have an advantage where it seems like lately they might not have the superstars that are going to be lottery picks, but because they've played together for a long time, they've got some experience, they seem to do better in the tournament. Exactly. And bottom line, this will be the best defensive club UConn's faced in a while. San Diego State plays lockdown defense. All right, let me play devil's advocate. And I've been doing a lot of podcasts on today in sports betting. In fact, you're going to be guesting Friday morning yep. with me. So you can go to pregamepodcast.com and uh, get all the podcasts. And we're going to be talking actually Saturday Breaking games, down the Elite Eight. Elite Eight uh, for Saturday's card. Um, or Final Four, Elite Eight. Elite yeah, eight. yeah, Elite Eight, exactly. But something that I discussed this week was, you know something? I'm not sure if the NCAA tournament is not the square betters paradise. Here's what I mean. What are the two things that square betters do? One is they bet what they see recently. And usually there's a disadvantage that, that it's deceiving. But let me pose something to you. March Madness is about a team getting hot, gaining right confidence, time, sure. and just running through those six games. Sure. Uh, how often does the team that's the favorite entering the tournament win the tournament? Far less than half the time. Because th it's not about being the best team, it's about being the hottest team. Now, if you're the best team, you have a better chance of being the hottest team, but still. Agree. So, as much as my first instinct as a non-square, let's call it, is to bet against UConn, perhaps maybe the tournament is set up in a way that makes the way the squares do it not so wrong. 
Do you think maybe that fading the hot team in the regular season wins, but maybe it doesn't win in the NCAA tournament? Quite, let me ask you that question. I think you could use that with some success when you're talking about playing two times in four days. But I think that break in the action gives the sharp guys so the advantage because Squares had all week to watch ESPN, to listen to all the hype. And now they're going to bet more on based on perception than anything else. So what you're saying is we got two, this is interesting, we got two factors. One is how hot the team is. And you're saying that the break between Saturday and Thursday is going to is going to is put put a little water on the fire. They, Connecticut won't be as hot, and you're saying because their great performance is being shown on TV for day after day after day, and people are on talk radio talking about how great Connecticut is, that the premium put on them because of their hotness actually is going up because of the break. Exactly, and it's forming the public's opinion where they may have an edge from round one to round two, seeing it with their own eyes and riding that hot team. But now, all of a sudden, their perception and their opinion is being formed by watching Sports Center, by listening to sports radio, not as much by their own. You're saying the feeling. two factors: one's going one way, which is the hotness is going down, and you're saying the public premium is going up. Correct. If somehow Connecticut wins this game, you're going to be less inclined to fade them on Saturday just because now both factors are reversed is there's not a much, as much time to get people excited about what they did Thursday and number two they can stay hot with a 48 hour turnaround. Exactly, exactly. But I think this right here they're in a disadvantage. Bottom line, on a neutral court I'd make San Diego State about a five point favorite. That's true value right there for me. Having them as a, a pick em or a one point dog is a no-brainer to is bet. Is there a home court edge here? No. Because they're, they're in proximity. Right, right, right. So, I mean, do you account for it? You've got to think, uh, there's a lot of debate about how crowds go in these tournaments. Do you see any crowd advantage for San Diego State? No, no, especially since UConn's one of those teams that travels Market. well. They're, they're a marquee team. You have all week, you know, and they're one of those teams that plays a non-conference schedule where they go to those invitationals. So they're used to the travel. They're not a team that is in buses throughout the season, and now all of a sudden they got to travel somewhere and they're not used to that. Let me pose my second reason I think it's a square batter's paradise. I believe that one of the ways the squares do poorly is they bet the marquee teams. They bet the Notre Dames, the Dukes, whatever the sport is. There's a Lakers, there's a set of marquee teams. But typically in college basketball, the marquee teams have the most experienced coaches. Coach K, sure. Self of Kansas. I, again, there's exceptions to that, but it's rare a marquee programs turning around a lot of coaches. So by definition, they're going to have a lot of tournament experience. I believe tournament coaching experience is one of the key factors. You just talked about it, the difference between day or game one and game two of the weekly sets, the Thursday, Saturday, then the Thursday, Saturday next week, or the Friday, Sunday. That difference you only deal with once. All year, which is in the tournament. Coach K's got 20 plus years, other guys got none. So if people are putting one point of premium, let's say, on Kansas because they're Kansas, right. they might be doing it for the wrong reason, but because Coach Self would deserve that, for example, then, then they're not so wrong by doing it. I, I agree totally. I think you're absolutely right. I think the coaching factor is more important not when they have this kind of layoff. I think it's, the, it's really a factor first to second round, sweet really? 16 to Elite Eight, only because now you have five days to prepare. Which I heard I that, have a good shot of preparing a team now there's in two five way, days. Wait, 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 that's interesting. There's two ways to look at that. In football, when there's, two, when there's a bye week, Usually the best coaches, Belichick, Andy Reid, uh, in the NFL, you'll hear about, okay, you give them two weeks, you're to prepare, in trouble. You're in trouble. Or right, Lou right. Holtz with, in bowl games. Right. Or Joe Pa in bowl games right. back in the day. So in your mind, I've always heard Bobby Knight back in the day, too. You get, when he's got that five days, he's going to come up with stuff you've never seen before. So, but I think I see your side, too, is if you hardly have any prep time, then the ability to do it very efficiently matters. But I think the factors, I, I, you got to weigh it more, I think, because a Coach K is going to be able to come up with a game plan a lot more efficiently in, in 12 hours than a coach who hasn't been there. 
given five days, yeah, you give Coach K five days, he'll come up with so a much ways. better plan. Exactly. But now your your coach that isn't the Coach K caliber, he's got an extra couple of days to, for something to come to mind, you know, for for something to pop out of maybe, that tape. Maybe the answer is this. If you have a coach that's deficient, that deficiency can be made up by having the extra days. But if you have a coach that's elite, he can use those five extra days in a way that's very powerful. Well said. So, 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 and I've never thought of it that way, but so really the five days benefits the great coaches and the bad coaches. The average coaches are just right in the middle. That's interesting. All right, well, this will be some of the stuff we uh, continue with with the podcast, some of the concepts. Give us your official projection. I got San Diego State here. You know, you know that. Uh, uh-huh. I got them winning this game, what, 65 uh-huh. 60. I think it's going to be a low scoring game, and their defense is just going to cripple UConn. Well, I got to tell you, what I've been doing is uh, either endorsing a pick, being neutral, or fading. I'm going to endorse this one. I just think San Diego State is, it's interesting. I was prepping for a radio spot with a friend of pregame, John Kincaid, who's an ESPN weekend host, but he's in Atlanta. He's been a great friend of pregame. I did a spot just about an hour ago with him. And prepping for it, it surprised me. San Diego State, and, and, and this was only at one sports book, is, has better odds now or, or is paying more now to win the tournament than they did before this tournament started. They were literally the fifth favorite. You know, it was all four number ones, and San Diego State was next before the tournament started. And now there's numerous teams ahead of them. Well, because now they ones. know you're facing Duke. You know, with well, Duke being an almost double-digit favorite against Arizona, you know they're going to meet up with Duke. Where before, people were hoping, you know, no, uh, Texas might get in there. So uh, now that you're facing Duke, it's like if New England's in your way in the come – NFL playoffs, your odds just increased. You know? I hear you, but no one expected Duke to. I mean, no, eighty-eight percent of the time, had him in the Sweet Sixteen. The, sure, yeah, sure. I mean, number ones make the Elite Eight seventy-four percent of the time. And let's not forget so Ohio State. Ohio State's also on this side of the bracket. So now you got they were they were now you got Ohio too. State and Duke. I think we can agree San Diego State for whatever reason has fallen out of favor. That's usually when I want to play them. I agree. I right, agree. So I'm going to endorse it. Uh, I'm happy for that. that I'm down? happy for you that. that I could just put the, the dollar sign there. <laughs> so not a star, no, just a dollar, a dollar sign. sign. That's a dollar sign. All right, it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comments section with VR and me. And next up, we're going to be talking a Friday Sweet 16 matchup.